Does that seem to help any better? Uh, testing one, two, testing one, two. Okay. Okay, so I don't need the headphone part on, but guys, I hope this is a little easier now um, that the volume is picking up better. But a little meter I see, it looks like it kind of is. So again, going back to leash reactivity, um, If we catch things at an earlier stage of the leash reactivity, it's easier. If we wait for the explosion, all I can say is good luck. And that, that once that they hit that explosion level, it's like dealing with a child who's already in full-blown temper tantrum mode. You know how hard it is to get through to them. And it's the same thing with our dogs. So if you wait for the explosion and you try to give them that treat, they may not take that food at all. So look for the earlier stages. And anybody, again, who's watching, just shoot me a comment. Let me know if the volume is better. I understand the first 10 minutes, 15 minutes of this, I was kind of garbled. So if I have to repeat, I will repeat. Um, I apologize about that, modern technology, I guess. So again, if your dog is exhibiting leash reactivity, everything slows down. Look for early warning signs. They don't just go. There's always a warning. I've heard it. Dog goes from zero to 10. They just don't go zero to 10. There's a warning. You need to look for it. Learn how your dog normally walks when there's absolutely no distractions. Watch their body language. See how they're reacting when there's no distractions. So this way, when that distraction, that other dog comes, you have a better opportunity to make a correction because you'll see that change. And like I said, it's usually if you focus on their heads, because that's where I seem to see it, their eyes will get buggier, the ears will change. Something will change. Make your correction then. Your timing has to be good because if you don't catch that warning, then they go zero to 10. And then we're trying to correct them when we're way up here and it's almost, almost impossible. It's not impossible, but it's real, real hard and it becomes a lot of work. We never want to work that hard. So that's the thing about leash reactivity. I'm still hoping one of my neighbors gets back from their vacation or whatever they're doing and I get an opportunity to work with his dog who is, from what I understand, very leash reactive and to get the whole thing on videotape so we can share it while we're doing this live so we can show you everything that we're seeing and what we're talking about. Because talking about it is one thing, seeing it is believing it. The beauty of it is it can and can be fixed, can be corrected. It's taking the time, looking for those early warning signs. It's no different than anything else. Anytime you need to change a behavior, you're changing a state of mind. And if we can catch these behaviors in an earlier st arousal stage of mind, it's easier to correct it. It's no different than a dog who has phobias of a, of a crate. If we put them in the crate and we work them on being able to accept the crate, we can't 
reward the state of mind until it's calm. And the reward on a crate would be we let you out. So you got to calm down a little bit. But the first time I put a dog in a crate, I'm not going to leave them in there for hours. They may be in there for seconds because they haven't had a chance to register that ooh, what's going on here. So I'm going to reward them for going into the crate and just staying by the door for two seconds. Good. Let's go. Come out. Yay. Let's go back in. Now I'm going to go to four seconds and then I'm going to go to eight seconds and 16 and so on and so forth until I get them to where they're comfortable and they just say, I'm going to my room and going to bed. But it's always looking at the state of mind. It's not about the physical. Guys, you know me. I don't talk about physical. I don't physically control dogs. I try to mentally control dogs. I do mentally control dogs. It's a lot easier if you understand there is, you know, it's not unpredictable. If you understand what your dog is saying through their body language, you can start making corrections today. Simple. I'm not saying, I shouldn't say simple, but you can start. So if your dog is overexcited, catch it before it gets excited. Don't reward the excitement. If your dog is afraid of certain things, sounds, whatever, wait, don't coddle, control the state of mind, make that sound represent calm. If another dog on a walk triggers your dog's state of mind, that has to represent calm. We got to teach them this. But it's always earlier, easier to do it in the earlier stages. So again, I hope this makes sense. Anybody watching, put the comments in. First of all, let me know if my sound is working. Um, it would be great to see the comments. Let me know. Uh, I do see I have some people watching. So if you can put the comments in, that'd be great. Um, I'm going to be wrapping this up early today. I've been under the weather, actually. Unfortunately, I have COVID, so talking for a long period of time kind of gets me all congested. So, But I did want to bring this to you uh, this week. Um, leash reactivity, sound is fine now, thanks. Um, great, thank you, Nancy, for letting me know. I don't understand this modern technology. Um, I have to figure this one out next. Um, Okay, good. Thank you, Samantha. Um, how much can I reasonably expect from a four-month-old puppy? How much can... That's a good question. How much can you expect? In short bites, a lot. But you got to focus on what's important. You know, I think with puppies, the biggest mistake we make is we try to do so much so quickly. I'm going to give you my puppy routine that I worked on with my Zoe. Um, and I picked and choose what I worked with, when I worked with them, and how hard I worked on them. Um, at four months old, 16 weeks, what I would expect for my dog at that point already, if I've had them since they were eight weeks, which is a usual time period, is I expect them to be 95% housebroken. Starting to walk on the leash very well. And their recall the come command from a six foot range, almost bulletproof. But I work very hard at all of those things. Potty training starts day one, eight weeks old. They start learning how to be potty trained. Eight weeks old, they start. Zoe started learning how to walk on a leash properly. Eight weeks old, I started teaching Zoe the come command. <coughs> I didn't focus on the sit. I didn't focus on the stay. I didn't focus on the lay down or give me your poor or anything like that. I focused on those three things and I put all my energy and effort into them in short training sessions. Puppies can't be going through two hours of training. They just can't. They're just, we're going to lose their attention. So 15 minute intervals is what I worked with with Zoe. And it wasn't 15 minutes of leash, potty, come. It was 15 minutes. I worked the leash for 15 minutes and we went back to the crate and went for nappy nap. Then maybe the next time I took her out, it was 15 minutes working on the recall, the come command, and then back to the crate. I did everything in very short durations because those things I was teaching her, the potty, the recall 
and the leash at manners was so important. There were treats involved because, again, I use treats for things that are high value to me. So with Zoe, what she learned very quickly from a very young age is she was in her crate. She came out. She was on a leash. We walked to her bathroom spot with a short leash. It wasn't about smelling and peeing and pooping and picking up everything on the ground because she was a puppy. So I had to make sure the leash was held properly so she couldn't pick up things. Till we got to where she was allowed to go to the bathroom, I gave her the full leash. She could do whatever she wants uh, without picking up stuff and eating. And she peed, she pooped, she got praised, treat, treat, treat outside when she peed and pooped instantly. And <coughs> then we came back in with the short leash in a healing, structured manner. Then maybe the next time we go out, we do the same routine with the leash. And then after she did her bathroom stuff, I worked on the recall, the cum. So she started understanding two things, her name and what cum means. So any commands I would do if she was going potty, good Zoe, good PP Zoe, good poopy Zoe, whatever. I used her name as much as possible for everything positive. So she associated her name with a positive. So she started learning her name too. I only used her name for the positives, never the negatives. So she made a mistake. It wasn't, Zoe, you're bad. No, it was always for the positives because her name is important. Zoe, come. Yay, good Zoe, good girl. So at four months old, what I would expect from my dog is, like I said, 95% potty trained. And the reason I say 95% is because there's going to be accidents, and usually those accidents are because we missed the cue. Two, they would start understanding the re the leash manners, the mastering the walk back to basic style, and definitely start understanding what the come command is. Those would be the things I'd focus on. Those are what they should start understanding already. Because by the time they're six months old, they should be able to walk, have that off-leash experience, and their recall should be bulletproof if you use a 100-foot leash. That they come straight back to you. Those are the ones I tell people to focus on 90% of their time because, I like I said, if you go to a puppy class, they're going to work on the cutesy stuff, the sit, the stay, the, 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 the poor, whatever. Yes, those are important. But to me, leash manners and definitely the recall are lifesavers. Saves their lives. God forbid the puppy gets out. I call. I want my puppy to come back to me. So at four months old, that's where I would expect to see my dog. It's time, it's effort, but because you can only, again, at four months old, you're only going to put in 15, 20 minutes, maybe a half hour training three or four times a day. Because at that age, they should be sleeping a little bit more. And again, if you do training at that early age, they're going to be tired. They're going to need more sleep than what puppies get today. And puppies need a lot of sleep. It's like having an infant. They need a lot of sleep. When we're home all day with our puppies, we want to be with them. We don't let them sleep enough. And that's when I actually have later on in life some harder behavioral cases. So, again, work on leash manners. Follow my YouTube channel. Go to my master, uh, how to leash train my dog in five easy steps. Uh, focus on those five steps of walking the dog. Work on your recall. Continue working on potty training. Keep the crate there. Use the crate if you're using a crate. These are all things that will you can work on the sit. Stay is important. I don't personally use put a lot of onus on stay. If I ask a dog to sit again because I'm thinking of behavior, I don't. If I say sit, that means you don't move until I give you another command. Um, a lot of people don't do that. So of course you want to work the stay command. You want to work stay command. You know, at thresholds at certain spots. You know. Um, by six six months old, I would start probably going to a place command with every single dog. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I hope that answered your question, Nancy. What I would expect, what I think is reasonable for a four-month-old puppy, it's if you put the effort in now, it is so much enjoyable for the rest of the journey that we go on with our dogs. Put the effort in today for the better tomorrow. 
Um, I hope that answered your question. Guys, I know I'm only at the half hour mark, but I can feel myself getting all clogged up and my throat's starting to get a little raspy here. So we're going to wrap it up. I'm going to put it out there and I'll also post it out on my Facebook page. Um, I know next weekend is Christmas Eve and then the following week is New Year's Eve. So I don't know if you guys want me to do the Saturday morning. If you want me to, of course, I will be happy to. Uh, I'll put the questionnaire out there on the Facebook group pages. It's up to you guys. Uh, come January, and again, it'll be posted on my Facebook page. I will still continue to do my Saturday mornings, but I'm going to introduce one night a week where I'm going to do this. So hopefully we can start getting more and more people involved in asking questions and helping us live up to my dream of helping one dog and one family at a time. With that being said, my folks celebrating Hanukkah. Tomorrow starts Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. If we don't do any more live sessions this year, may everybody please have a happy, healthy holiday season, a blessed new year. Um, as always, guys, thank you for inviting me into your home each and every Saturday morning. It is truly an honor and a privilege to do this. Uh, I apologize about the sound quality in the beginning. Um, with that being said, guys, Stay healthy, stay safe, God bless, and remember, together we can help one dog and one family at a time. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, guys. Happy and healthy holidays.